Hey everyone and welcome back to another video. We have brilliant news. Patch 8.1 is currently testing a new feature that, look, it might seem dry and boring in the face of it, but it's actually pretty damn incredible. This is a big game changer that will be felt for years to come. And you might think that's all hyperbolic, even the video title, but think about it. For years, World of Warcraft has ran on everything, but ran well on nothing. It's almost impossible to build a computer that will run World of Warcraft well in all scenarios, especially raid content. And it's all down to an engine issue that they seem to be fixing in 8.1, or at least doing a lot of work towards. Now, it turns out this is also decently close to my education. My final year project was creating a rendering engine from scratch using C++ and OpenGL, so I've experienced directly pro uh, programming the GPU and how the CPU can bottleneck all that stuff. So, World of Warcraft is finally making uh, work towards property utilizing multi-core CPUs. Now, this is a massive improvement, and once implemented, this is going to lead to massive frame rate increases for players, especially in the scenarios that count the most. You see, World of Warcraft is not typically a GPU or graphics card bound game. Uh, that means that your frame rate is likely being limited by your processor, not your graphics card. As an example, the RTX 2080 Ti is in my home rig. It's like the fastest available current uh, GPU. It runs World of Warcraft at 50 to 60 FPS, Okay, it's at a high 3440 by 1440 resolution, but that's a graphics card that can run a graphically intense game like Assassin's Creed Odyssey at that insane resolution, complete maxed out settings, always above 60 frames per second. Suffice to say, the GPU is not holding me back. It's all the CPU. And as time has went on, consumer CPUs have went in the direction of having more and more CPU cores rather than faster ones, sort of. And this means that while the possible performance is tremendously high, it's often only realized by applications that can use the CPU fully. And doing this requires extra work on the developer. They have to write their applications in such a way that they can do tasks in parallel across multiple threads. Um, and indeed, this is something that I've experienced with from university as a part of my final project. And it's a really good example for this. I was generating terrain height data for a solar system, like a procedural solar system thing. Now, by default, it was running in one thread, and it did it linearly, which took ages. Once I modified it to be multi-threaded, it did them all simultaneously. Suffice to say, it was a lot faster. Now, here's a great example of this. When I was running around Boralus, my GPU utilization normally 40%, even at max settings. What did I see when I looked at my CPU? 16% utilization, and it was all just one per core was maxed out. So as you can see, World of Warcraft is using very few of the available resources that it has. So that's the principle of why this change for World of Warcraft's engine is extremely important. Right now, your graphics card could probably render like 200 frames per second or whatever, maybe for a 2080 Ti, but it's being bottlenecked because your modern four core, eight thread, six core, um, 12 thread, or eight core, 16 thread processor is barely being used by the game. The CPU has a lot to do in World of Warcraft, and one place where this bottleneck can be seen clearly is in large view distances and complex scenes. You see, the graphics card is kind of dumb. It doesn't really know anything about what it's doing other than what it has to draw. That means that the CPU has to do a fair amount of work to tell the graphics card what it's got to do. For an example, what direction is your camera facing? What objects are in the camera? What LOD version of each object is going to be used? And um, this stuff is kind of then arranged into chunks. Now, you probably noticed this. Have you ever had the game like glitch out on you and you kind of see a big hole in the world? It's like a big square. Well, that's a chunk. The larger the view distance, the more chunks. The more complex the scene, the more objects per chunk. Now, it is true that World of Warcraft doesn't seem to handle this stuff particularly well anyway, but what is for sure is that only having one core doing all that is far from ideal. Now, this is going to be noticed by people using older, high core count CPUs, like maybe a, you know, a, a fifth gen extreme edition, or maybe a more modern one, like an 8700K. But the people who will probably see the most benefit are those with AMD Ryzen. See, the Ryzen Ryzen CPUs, for their price, typically have a very high core count, but each core is generally clocked a little bit lower. Now, um, they're tremendously versatile bits of kit. They're a little bit behind uh, Intel and gaming for most games, though, but being able to fully utilize a Ryzen chip would net you particularly high gains. Now, this is kind of interesting. Personally, I have a 6900K in my rig. It's an 8-core, 16-thread. World of Warcraft, as I said, is only using one core. It's maxed out. Um, you know, the others are pretty much idle, 16% uh, utilization, and that just sucks. So I was very excited to benchmark this. But there's a reason why I'm currently recording the second version of this video. So basically, Mystical OS, the dev of DBM, reported this, then Wowhead picked up, uh, up on it and did some testing. I tested it in the office in the morning, but then I got home to my 6900K rig, which I thought would be the perfect test case for this improvement, and Blizzard had uploaded a version of the PTR that broke it. When I turned on the multi-core optimization, the game got really ropey. I started to see chunks not being rendered, and then the game would always crash. The error message would then 
reference chunking or chunk. So it seems to me to be reasonable that the main optimization they're making here is parallelizing that part of their pipeline, which is maybe what's allowing for higher GPU utilization as the CPU is, of course, the bottleneck. Now, during my two hours of banging my head off the wall watching this just not work at all, at one point I did restart it and I had about 10 seconds of 36% CPU util uh, utilization up from 16 and about 75 FPS and Stormsong up from highs of about 50. Now, um, thankfully, Wowhead were able to get benchmarks before Blizzard updated the PTR with the build that broke this. So let's talk about benchmarks. At 4K on their test rig, Wowhead saw DX11 performance of 46 min, 50 average, 54 max in Varalis. Swapping over to DX12 multi-threaded optimizations turned on, their numbers went up to a min of 56, average of 58, and max of 61. That's a 16% improvement in performance, but stepping down to 1080p, they saw minimums of 56, average of 62 and max of 64 in DX11. With DX12 multi-core, they saw mins of 69, average of 77, max of 79. That's a 25% increase to frame rate and that's what Mystical reported as well. This is massive. If you're running at 45 FPS most of the time, this will bump you up to 60 or above. That is enough to take while from feeling like rubbish to feeling really smooth, polished and consistent. Though I would like to see some frame timing tests for all this with multi-core turned on. But overall, it's hard to state how important this is, because especially over the last few years, we've seen every successive generation of consumer CPUs increase their core count. And that means that programs optimized for parallel computing are doing well, but the ones that aren't are really suffering. Older programs like World of Warcraft would actually be punished more and more by the way that industry is kind of going. So this is a problem they needed to solve. Now, are things perfect? No, but it's significant, big, big progress. Um, like, this is the difference between WoW feeling ropey and WoW feeling smooth. The only thing that I couldn't really test well in PTR um, is, is raiding. I'm pretty sure the multi-threaded gains could be strong there, assuming there's more going on than just the scene-related optimizations that I was talking about earlier. But hopefully this is a first step and there's more to come, um, and hopefully it is something that would eventually come to DX11. Not everyone has a DX12 card, but if they're using DX-specific functionality, they very well may be, then that might not be possible. But the core is actually, that this change sets up World of Warcraft to be an application that will run well in the future. Uh, I This is really big. I'm, I'm trying to impress the importance onto this, and I know you won't really feel it until, you know, you this comes out, maybe in 8.1, maybe 8.2, maybe they have to, like, push it back, but whenever you sit down, you turn this on, and suddenly World of Warcraft is 25% higher frame rate. Instead of, and what's good about that as well is, if your average frame rate is maybe 50 frames per second, well, your min's maybe 45, your max is maybe 50. So you're fluctuating plus or minus like, you know, five or 10 frames. And if those five or 10 frames that it's fluctuating are below the refresh rate of your monitor, then you're not going to have consistent, uh, like feeling frame times. And that's not going to make the game feel super polished and smooth. Well, if you can just get it so that your average frame rate is 65, your minimum is 60 and your max is 70, then just about everything is running above the refresh rate of your 60 hertz monitor, which means that World of Warcraft will feel like it's pretty much just running at a nice, smooth, consistent frame rate. And I think that's really big because just through all the time of playing WoW, it's been hard to get WoW to run at a high frame rate. And it also means that, like in Legion, they increase the maximum view distance uh, up to 10 from 7. And what you'll notice is, if you set that to 10 and you go into certain places, basically, if you go into a new zone, it's going to run really bad. Well, it seems like that is the worst case scenario for the CPU-related bottleneck that I laid out in the first, like, two-thirds of this video. So this change might actually let 10 uh, view distance be a usable setting for people. So there you go. That is, um, that's it for this video. It's kind of unfortunate I wasn't able to get my own benchmarks on this, but I figured that because this happens to be close to some of the, some of the stuff that I've, I've done before, um, like from the education perspective, uh, I can kind of help to explain why this is important, how it works and like how it slots into how you would play the game. So, uh, I hope that's been helpful and maybe you've learned something from this video. Um, but yeah, other than that, thank you very much for watching this video. And um, if you want to see more stuff, then over in the Patreon, there is, of course, the physical rewards. Uh, so you can check those out. Here they are. So um, yeah, they're on Patreon. And also over there, we've got um, some other content. There's vlogs in the way as well as updates behind the scenes and some early access. So thank you very much for watching. Uh, let me know what you thought and I will see you next time.